Hello everyone. Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining uh, London uh, AI Technology Meetup Group. Uh, so every uh, month uh, we are planning to bring a lot of uh, technology innovation meetups in this group. Uh, so previous meetup is about uh, deep learning. Uh, so this meetup we are bringing on uh, how to work with uh, graphics in Python language. Uh, so Python is, uh, you know, uh, used in a lot of areas. Uh, so especially in machine learning, deep learning side, a lot of innovations are happening in Python language. Uh, so in this uh, particular session, we look at how we can work with uh, graphics related elements in Python language. So these are useful uh, in a lot of different uh, use cases. So we look at some of the use cases that uh, we can use uh, for the Python language as well. Right, uh, so we look at uh, in this uh, particular meetup, how we can uh, leverage the Python technology for 2D graphics, uh, but uh, not only for 2D graphics, uh, we can also use for 3D graphics as well. Uh, so Python is really powerful language where we can use this uh, for a lot of uh, graphical, a lot of different areas. So in this particular uh, meetup, we are looking at how we can leverage Python language uh, for pa to particular graphical related uh, task. Uh, so we are going to start with a certain package and we are going to look at how to use that uh, graphical uh, package and then how to uh, enable it in the Plusk environment, like how to build a web-based uh, solution for that and also how to generate image uh, from that, like how to uh, create uh, some graphics dynamically. So, you know, uh, using machine learning and uh, advanced deep learning techniques, we can generate images, uh, we can generate art, uh, drawings, paintings, things like that. Uh, so we look at how, how we can get started with things like that, how we can create those kind of graphics dynamically using different techniques, right? So first uh, we need to familiar with uh, some of the graphical elements uh, that is available with the 2D graphics in Python. So that is what we are going to look at in today's meetup. So do uh, keep uh, tuning into our group. Uh, so in this, uh, we are sharing a lot of uh, new uh, updates and innovations, use cases uh, in the AI technology stack. Okay, so let's uh, start. Uh, so the uh, the package we are using is called Pixie uh, Python. Uh, so that is the specific package uh, that we can use to create 2D graphics in a Python environment. Uh, so this is the command you can see uh, using pip install. We can install this package. So it supports a lot of uh, standard image formats like you know PMP, BMP, JPG, like that image formats. And also you can use for text-based format and uh, image effects, graphics, things like that. So there are a lot of uh, use cases that we can apply using this package. Uh, so this is an open source package. It's completely free of charge. And there are a lot of updates happening in this package that we can use. Uh, throughout the different version. Uh, so the current version we are using, uh, we can use for uh, text editing, uh, we can use uh, for typing text, we can use a certain fonts uh, with it, and also we can uh, define certain graphics, uh, like could be different shapes, lines, things like that. Also, we can add effects on top of that. So we can ap apply certain uh, graphical effects on top of the uh, certain images. So that is what we are looking at so it will be useful to create certain 2d arts in python and then we can add more uh, different like uh, algorithms from machine learning to make it more randomized and dynamic right so we can add different capabilities to uh, create uh, even you can set up this into a neural network and we can create this into more dynamic perspective right uh, how we can create graphics uh, in more dynamic way right there so there are a lot of uh, use cases on how we can generate these kind of graphics uh, by using certain algorithms. So that's the starting part. So we need to know how uh, we can get started with 2D graphics in the Python environment. And then we can see how we can leverage this technology uh, to build this kind of uh, 2D graphics. Uh, so here you can see uh, where we can get the high quality uh, graphics in Python. Uh, you just need to install this uh, PIP install Pixie Python package. Uh, that's the main requirement. So you need to install this uh, package uh, to get benefit out of it. And then we can use certain capabilities in this uh, particular package. 
So that is what we are mainly highlighting on today's meetup. And then uh, we are going to look at how we can incorporate this into Flask environment, and then how we can host this in the Heroku environment. Like then we can create a live website from this and we can host because uh, most of the things we do in Jupyter Notebook and Python are uh, in a certain environment that client cannot see or the users cannot see. So in order for the user to experience this, we need to convert this into a, a standard uh, Flask project. So Fly Flask is the web-based environment that supports uh, a certain user experience uh, in a web-based web platform. Then we can host this using uh, Horoku Lite platforms as uh, is free to use uh, where we can host this uh, Flask project and then we can test it out. And even we can give that for customers to test out and get uh, feedback from that. So first we'll start with the package. So you can see here where we can use basic uh, 2D graphics like that. So all uh, based on that specific uh, Python package, we can use this. So these are some uh, standard packages that we can use. So these are some basic shapes and effects that we can use here uh, in our package, right? Right, uh, so uh, there's a question related to the YouTube channel. So I will share uh, the YouTube link uh, and uh, all the details uh, later uh, at the end of the uh, meetup. So there's a, a different YouTube channel we are maintaining this uh, video stream. Uh, so we'll uh, share that as well. Uh, in the meetup link also, you can find uh, this YouTube uh, links as well. Yeah. Uh, so these are some of the basic uh, 2D graphics that we can use. So we'll see uh, how we can enable this in our uh, Python environment. So I'm using uh, Google Colab uh, for this one. Uh, so let me open up uh, Google Colab. So here in this Google Colab, you can see uh, I can uh, use uh, set up this. So first thing is I need to install the package. So as I mentioned earlier, I need to install the PIP package, which is the uh, Pixie package. So I could say uh, PIP install and I can install that package, which is uh, Pixie Python package like this. So I can install this uh, package, uh, Pixie Python, because uh, by default, uh, this package is not available in the uh, Python environment, the Anaconda environment. So that's why we need to uh, enable this package uh, to get this, right? So we can install this package uh, to, to get the benefit out of it. Then after that, we can see uh, how we can uh, leverage its features, how we can use uh, the basic features that is available in this package. So we can uh, start with uh, simple things like how we can uh, build a line, right? So how we can do a certain line uh, from this package, right? So let's look at uh, how we can do that. Uh, so once you install the package, so this is just a simple command, right? You can see PIP install uh, Pixie Python. You can just go to uh, Google Colab and then uh, you can uh, run this command and you just install the package, that's it. Then all the features in this package is available for you uh, like this, right? Okay, so now uh, you can see here uh, how we can use this package. So we can say import pixie, p-i-x-i-e, uh, like this. And then uh, from this, uh, we can start the uh, certain, uh, the, how we can set up a line. So we can uh, create a variable called image, pixie, right, that image. So this is uh, setting up the image, uh, image setup with the uh, width and height of the image. Uh, so I'm giving uh, 200 and 200 and um, I can give uh, some uh, like fill colors. So I can say image.fill uh, like this, then uh, pixie uh, dot color. So you need to use all uh, these uh, things like image, color, uh, there are different other parameters within the uh, pixie framework. Uh, most of the time there are other frameworks also available uh, for this. So we'll use a color like this, uh, the color parameter, and we are giving uh, this the color. Uh, then uh, we can use a paint option, paint. 
like this. Uh, so we can say uh, pixie, right? Uh, paint, uh, we can use the paint function. So the paint function will uh, uh, enable to draw. So if you are further doing things like drawing, uh, so I mentioned we can use this for automated drawing, like uh, drawing art, things like that. Uh, that is the one we can use. Uh, so in this case, we are drawing a line. Uh, this is a basic kind of a starting uh, step. Like we are going to look at uh, how we can draw a certain line uh, in this. So we can say, say e dot, uh, we can use this one now, which is called solid paint option like this. Then uh, we can get the paint dot color. So we can uh, define the pass color. Like this. And we can give uh, the color in the hexadecimal format. So there are websites you can check these hexadecimal formats of colors. Then uh, we can start drawing. After that, uh, we have this uh, image environment. Uh, we have this uh, solid paint. Now we can draw. Now we can create the color. So we can create a certain graphic. So we can say uh, CTX equal image dot new context. Like this. CTX. Then we can use stroke style. Uh, so what is the style you need to have? So we can have different uh, stroke styles uh, we can define. So here we are going to have this uh, stroke style called uh, paint. Then uh, we can give uh, the line width. Like this. Then finally, uh, we can give uh, the stroke segment. Uh, what is your segment area of a uh, line uh, for the stroke? So we can provide that stroke segment. Like this, uh, so we'll give that. So now uh, we can uh, write this to the file. So we can say image dot uh, write file. If you want to get this to the screen, we can use package like matplotlib. And from that, uh, we can get this to the screen as well. Uh, but we'll use the official uh, one first. So we can uh, write this to a file like this image dot write file. So if you have everything uh, correct, uh, if there's no compilation error, then uh, you can see here there's a file called line.png and uh, you can uh, view this like this right this is called uh, line.png and you can uh, view the file like this right uh, so you can see uh, we can change this to a different color as here so you can check the the hexadecimal values of uh, each of these uh, different uh, paint colors. It need to be in the color range. Uh, based on that, uh, we can change, right? Uh, so here, this is the basic set of code uh, that you need uh, to create a line uh, using uh, this uh, Pixie package. So this is how you can set up the basic uh, set of code, minimum set of code to draw a line like this. Uh, so let's go back to the site and uh, continue with the rest. So you can see uh, these are some of the basic shapes that we can have. And uh, we can automate this. Like we can uh, create this uh, in a dynamic way. We can use some uh, random functions or some machine learning algorithms to input uh, certain parameters and then continue uh, with this. Uh, it could be different algorithm or neural network. We can set up to automate this process. So every time, it will return a more dynamic kind of a graphics. So it could be a unique. So even if you set up that in uh, two different kind of a neural network, end of the one uh, starting into uh, another one. So it will be uh, more 
create a more dynamic kind of a, uh, uh, behavior and dynamic kind of a art. So that is the ultimate goal of setting up this. So here you can see a different kind of variation. So here uh, we are going to uh, explore what kind of different options are available in this one. So first one now you can see is the line uh, that is the code that we just completed. So here you can see we are setting up a line. Uh, it's a very simple uh, minimum uh, set of code that we can use to create a line. Then uh, similarly, uh, we can also create a square like this. Uh, so the square one you can see uh, is follow the same uh, setup just like earlier, right? Uh, so it also have the similar setup like this. So we have the uh, image and fill color. Then we have the, uh, the color and the paint. Then we have here uh, the fill style. Uh, so those are very much the same. But here you can see we are using CTX dot uh, fill rectangle right so we are using ctx dot uh, fill rectangle so this part is the main difference so with this part we'll be creating a rectangle so if you compare this with the previous code so we are you can see so in the previous code uh, we are using stroke segment right so very much the same there are minor changes but ctx dot stroke segment will draw a line but here in this one, we are using uh, CTX dot fill rectangle. So using the fill rectangle method, we can create a square, right? Uh, create a rectangle from that, right? So the next one is a blur effect. So you can see uh, like this, if you have already an image, we can add effects on top of that, right? So, you know, if you look at uh, softwares like photo editing softwares like Photoshop or there are a lot of tools right, right now available. So we can do a lot of effects on top of the existing image. So in this uh, particular package also, we can do uh, uh, up to some level. I would say like we have all the features like Photoshop and those kind of advanced uh, effects, but some level of effects is available uh, that we can do here uh, is available in this. So this is called blur effect where uh, you have an image and then you can add some uh, blur effect. So here you can see we are having this section called blur, right? Uh, so blur level is 20, uh, draw mask like this. So here, uh, first we are going to draw the trees and then uh, after that, we are going to draw the blur, right? So on top of the uh, image of the particular graphics, we are going to draw the blur section, right? Like that. So we can do that, right? So that is like applying certain effect on top of the existing graphics. So you can see it's not that much complex. So it's more simplified in this package. It's just like any other uh, Python uh, similar code where we can add these kind of effects on top of the existing uh, package, right? So in this one, uh, if I explain the code again, so we have initially uh, the basic uh, code uh, to uh, set up, right? Uh, set up the image or the draw the image. Then we are going to define here uh, the blur, uh, the three dot copy, the blur level, and the mask, right? So first we are going to draw the the trees. The first uh, uh, the original image. You can see here the background image, and then the blur image. This one blur. So on top of that we are adding the blur, and in the blur we can define the blur uh, levels. It's like that. And also we can set up some mask. What is the area? If you want to blur the entire image or certain region like that. So that is also possible in this uh, package that we can do it like that, right? Uh, so let's look at the example on uh, uh, the previous example, which is how you can uh, create a rectangle. Uh, so let me go back to the uh, Jupyter notebook, right? I'll add the new code section. Uh, so we have, uh, so I'll just copy uh, the similar part uh, in this, save some time. So here uh, I can say CTX image dot new context. Right, uh, then uh, I can say CTX dot Fill style. 
paint then uh, i can say the rectangle so ctx dot uh, fill so you can see different options are there so we are using uh, fill rectangle method uh, so this will create a rectangle like this then uh, finally we can uh, write that image dot uh, write file Right, so we can have this image created like this. Then you can check here. Uh, so you can see the image is created and double click and you can see image is created like this right? sky image, right? So very simple uh, to use this package, uh, it's straightforward. You can use this package, right? Uh, then uh, we will see how we can use the text so if you are using a text, uh, you can use uh, things like fonts, right? You know, uh, when you want to uh, uh, create a text, particular text uh, kind of a graphics, we need to use fonts. So there are thousands of fonts available and there are localized fonts for different languages. So we can use that. So, you know, when you are working with fonts, uh, we have font files. So we can use these font files uh, to represent the particular fonts. And then uh, we can use that in our uh, project as well, right? So you need to have this font available in your project and then we can start. So we look at uh, how to work with text here, right? How to work with text, right? Uh, using this package. Uh, so the starting part is very much similar, just like earlier. So after that, we need to use a font, right? So we can say a font like this, read font. So you can see it's uh, available with the read font method, right? So in here, we can directly give a font file that is available. So we can directly give a certain font file and then uh, we can upload it, right? So we can give a font file and we can upload it. Right, so how to upload it? So what you can do is, so there's a question uh, about the video recording. Uh, so you'll be sharing the video recording in the Meetup group. Uh, I think everyone have access to the Meetup group, right? Uh, so in the Meetup group page, we'll be sharing. And if you are getting an error, just uh, you can type in the error in the chat as well. I'll try to help at the moment as well. What is the error message you are getting? Uh, you can type in the uh, chat as well. I can uh, support at the moment as well. Uh, otherwise, I can share the video. So video will be shared in the uh, Meetup group page. Uh, so I think everyone have access to the Meetup page. If anyone doesn't have the access, let me know. I will share that. So in that, I will be sharing the uh, recording of this uh, video uh, in the Meetup as a YouTube link in our channel. So here uh, you can see uh, in the file section, we can upload it. There's upload section. Uh, so Google Colab is really flexible where we can do a lot of things uh, completely free of charge. We can try out certain projects, even uh, they are providing some graphical rendering as well, GPU processing. Uh, we can use packages like TensorFlow also here. So here uh, we can uh, click upload and then uh, we can upload this. Uh, so here, let me, uh, just upload this file. Okay, so you can see here, I uploaded this uh, uh, Roboto regular ETS file. So this is the phone file that we are using here, uh, this particular file. That is the one uh, uh, that we are using. So let me uh, have that file here. So uh, you can see like this, you can upload. So you need to upload to uh, your working environment uh, like this, right? If you are getting any error messages right now, just you can type the error message and I will try to help uh, to fix it. Also, we'll be sharing recording as well. Right. If you have any questions, you can ask uh, as well. 
Right. Uh, so here uh, we create the image. Uh, this is a standard setup. Then read font. Uh, so this is uh, reading this uh, particular font. And additionally, uh, we can give font size. Like this. Uh, so we can uh, create read font uh, to create the font file. So here you can use any font files uh, that you are using. Uh, then uh, we can give the text. Right. Uh, like this and then uh, we can use uh, the text field where we can set up uh, the uh, particular positions of this text so we can uh, mention like this image uh, dot fill text font uh, text uh, like that uh, we are pass we are passing uh, so the image dot fill text is a method so inside that we can pass in the font the font file the text and the boundaries and the transforms uh, positions like this, right? So those are the things we need uh, to get this uh, up and running like this. And then uh, we can uh, get this image dot right file. Text dot PNG like this so here you can see uh, text is there as a image file format uh, it was created like this so it's not a text format it's created as image and uh, the text is created as an image right so it's really good for uh, multiple languages if you are supporting because you know uh, some browsers doesn't support uh, some environment doesn't support a lot of languages so if you want to showcase uh, some report or some output in two different languages, uh, we can use this method. And also in the same language, if you want to specify in a certain font, you know, even English UK, English US, there are different fonts are available, uh, typeface and different fonts. Uh, so if you want to represent your text in a certain specific font, we can use this also, where you need to refer, uh, refer your font file and then we can uh, do that as well like this so let me share this code as well uh, let me share first the first code uh, so then you can just check whether you can uh, work in that so i will share the first code of the line uh, code so in terms of code sharing uh, we are normally using this software uh, this software is called uh, code share uh, dot io so this is a really good uh, collaborative tool uh, that we can share the code among developers uh, and it's a collaborative way. Uh, the code link is available for 24 hours. Uh, everyone can access that and you can see it's supporting uh, different languages as well. Uh, so we can select uh, Python here. Like this. Then uh, let me copy this uh, line code. So you can check whether uh, this is working. And if you are get any error messages, let me know. So this is the code uh, for the line. So you should be able to get the line drawn uh, into the uh, your output. Uh, so let me share this link like this, in the chat. Uh, so everyone can access this link uh, from the code share and everyone can collaborate as well. So you can copy uh, from this link like this. Uh, then now you can try uh, running the code in the Google Colab environment and check whether you are getting any errors in that, right? So first error command is this one, uh, pip install pixie python. Uh, so I will copy that also in the chat. Uh, so first you need to install the package. Then uh, you can try the, the command, uh, a set of commands for the drawing of a line, right? If you are getting error messages, let me know. So you can try uh, this on Google Colab. Uh, so just few steps, just run uh, PIP install uh, Pixie Python with this mark, exclamation mark need to be there. 
in the Google Colab, uh, they still install the package. The second step is just, just drawing a line. So I have shared that code also, just run this. Uh, so you should be able to get this image here, line.png like this. So you can see, uh, I change the color, change it like this. Uh, then the second example, uh, we did the square. So that is a square file. Uh, then the last one is the, the text. Uh, so first try that first one. I'll give maybe one or two minutes. Uh, just if you are getting any errors, let me know. In terms of meetup recording, I will be sharing the link in the meetup uh, uh, group. Uh, so let me share the meetup uh, channel link as well. Uh, everyone have access to that. I'll share that as well. We'll be sharing that in the meetup uh, group. So if you are getting any error message, you can uh, type in the chat. So I will uh, happy to help. Uh, so I think uh, straightforward, right? So we'll just install the package and then uh, set up like this. Uh, then second one is square. That one is the font. Uh, so we need to have a font file. And then we set up that. And uh, after that, uh, you can see the text here. So every time uh, when you are looking at this graphic, so you can see it's just saved as an image. But uh, let's say we want to get this to a console, like output here. So how to do that? So let's look at how to do that. It's a small step uh, where we can use matplotlib to do that. Uh, I think everyone uh, may be familiar with matplotlib. It's a powerful package in terms of uh, charts, uh, in terms of uh, displaying data. Uh, especially in data science area. Uh, so we can use that package uh, to uh, draw that, get that image into the console output where we can see the image here, not like double click and open it. So if you want the uh, image as a profile, uh, we can use this method. Or if you want to get the image here in the console output, uh, we can use this uh, following method. So we can say import matplotlib dot uh, py plot as plt import matplotlib image as uh, mp image so this will recreate uh, image now uh, we can say image equal mp image dot im read so we can read the image which is text.png uh, the image we created and we can now plot that we can say plt dot I'm um, I'm sure with that to load that image. So we can say plt dot show, and uh, this will uh, get the image. So the image we saved earlier using a uh, matplotlib package and the matplot image package, we can display here like this. So let's uh, change the text. You can see it's updating the text uh, from here. It's creating an image. Uh, we are loading the image here. So you can see simple as that, uh, we can get that. So it's creating the image and then loading the image here. Right. Okay, so you can try the first one. If you're getting any errors, let me know. Right. So let's go back to the slide. So you can see uh, the, this one is about effect. So that means uh, first you need to have an image. On top of that, you can have effects. So there are a certain uh, number of effects that we can use. As I mentioned, we cannot go advanced like uh, Photoshop for those kind of softwares, but uh, some set of uh, graphical effects in 2D, we can use using this tool. 
Right. Uh, so once you uh, complete the projects like this, then uh, we uh, the next step is like to showcase this in a web environment, web-based environment. So for that, we can use a technologies like Flask. So using Flask, what you can do is we can create a web-based environment like this, right? So we can create a web-based environment like this uh, that's enabled with more features like you can create a uh, sign in, sign up dashboard. Uh, you can connect with the uh, backend. You can connect with Firebase like database, which is much easier to use. Uh, then you have a login users. You can sign in, sign up users. Then login users can get the these graphical features and they can maybe could be certain set of functionalities you are going to implement. You can do that. Uh, let's say you have paid feature, free feature, then you can add a payment gateway, uh, different payment gates are available, then you can add that also into the Flask. So likewise, you can start building a certain like a platform or the website uh, from the Flask environment. So now the Python is can be connected uh, using Flask as a web-based environment. One, once you convert this into a web-based environment, you get more features because uh, up until now, you connected just using uh, Google Colab, like Jupyter Notebook software. So, you know, in the Google Colab, we are using the Jupyter Notebook software. That is really good for data scientists uh, or technical uh, developers. But when you go to customer side, they are not familiar with these outputs or these ones. They want to visualize the things. They want to see like any other website. So that's where plus comes into place where plus is the main technology that uh, you need to be familiar in order to connect your certain uh, Python project or the machine learning project into the client side, because then only user can experience those features. So here, what we are doing is we are getting uh, some random generation. So we are generating some random lines, random graphics, uh, random gradients, things like that using plus. So first we'll convert in the project into a plus one, and then we are doing this randomization. And finally we are hosting it because first when you create the first project, it will be running local in your local machine, local environment. But to others to use it, we need to host it. Of course we can host it uh, in environments like AWS, uh, Azure, but of course in those, we need to start uh, getting the credits and uh, web hosting environments. So you need to pay certain uh, sign of credits and you need to get a domain and things like that. So just to, let's say we as a hobbyist, you are going to test out this project. So it will be costlier to even to start with. So that's why we can start with the platforms like Foroku. We are free to start. We can start freely. After only certain levels, we need to start. They will start charging. So where we can easily host our plus a project uh, in freely without any cost in the Horuko environment. And we can test it out and see, even you can give this project to users and get their feedback, right? So that is a much easier way to uh, set up the process. So platform like Horuko, uh, even available with CICD process, uh, which is uh, we call continuous integration and continuous deployment, where we can easily uh, do even modifications of these projects based on the feedback. Uh, using git and things like that you can uh, you can submit the project into the oracle environment as well so let's look at some of the steps uh, in uh, creating the plus project uh, so uh, the features so here you can see uh, your project now converted converting into a plus so you can see uh, now the python code is uh, no more uh, so the python code is converting into a plus project so we are we need to define a certain uh, web uh, plus is a HTML plus Python environment where we can create a web-based environment in the Python code, right? So that is the most about plus where we can see where in this particular code, you can see we are setting up home.html. We are setting up the route for the home. We are setting up the route to the root like that. So let me show the uh, file structure in a standard uh, plus project. So you can see here, uh, these are some of the other file structures uh, that uh, you can see.
Right, so you can see here, uh, the, these are some of the file structures you can see. So we have a starting file, which is called app.py, and we have a template file, which is going into uh, this uh, standard set of files, HTML. But these are not just HTML files. So if you open this file, uh, you can see, uh, if you open the file, uh, this is containing some Python code as well. So that is uh, the beauty of plus, where HTML plus Python is available included in, in that right so depend on the the certain file so let me open the first one uh, which is the rectangle.html so i i think you remember that we have created the rectangle uh, function in python so now uh, we can uh, replicate that right so we can i uh, use that uh, in the python environment right so here uh, we can use a certain uh, python codes yeah so here you can see uh, the code file uh, so we have uh, the standard html file and then uh, here we have uh, connecting uh, this url uh, as a static url here file name right uh, connecting this uh, to that image file right so let me open this with uh, not that. Right, so here you can see uh, we are opening this as a file name, uh, image react PNG, like this as an image class. So he, these are the standard uh, template files. And then we have some static files here, some image files here. And then uh, our main file is this one, which is app.py. So app.py uh, containing uh, the Python code, the main class code, where you can see here standard routes are here. And here inside the route, you can see the, the code. So this code is very much the same code that we did inside the Jupyter Notebook, but now it is copied into the Flask. So that means uh, we can see this output in the web-based environment. So we can see this output in the web-based environment. Similarly, we have the gradient function like this, and you can see the square function. So code is very much the same, but it is put it inside the uh, diff uh, homepage file and the route is square. So when the, when the user click square uh, method for the square page, it will go into this like that. So the similar Python functions can be routed and can be used within the Flask environment. So this is not only for this uh, 2D Python, it's available for any uh, Python project, any machine learning project, deep learning project. If you want to convert into a Flask a web-based environment, it's a one of the method. So you can see how a simple uh, method that we created earlier, for example, the square method we created earlier or the, the line method we created earlier is converted into the Flask environment using these methods. So like that, uh, here you can see we are converting these elements. And finally, we are called, calling this main uh, to run the environment. So here in the main method, even we can customize into different ports and IPs as well, or we can directly use the standard method as well. So like this, you can see we can uh, customize and we can create this uh, Flask environment. So in the slide also, we are discussing some. So you can see uh, app route line. So this is the line code. Uh, it's very much similar to the line code that we created earlier, but this is now running in the Flask environment. This is now running in the Flask environment, right? So I can even show this output. Uh, so the web piece uh, looks like this. So you can see, we can click the line. So then it's create the line that like this, right? So now uh, you can see it's running in the web. Uh, so this uh, Flask project is hosted in the Horuku environment. So we are Horuku uh, free uh, tool also, they are giving HTTPS and all the features where we can call these methods. And you can see, uh, so we had some random part as well. So you can see, every time we'll be getting new random line as well. 
Right. Okay. So uh, you can see here the image. We are setting some random features in this in this section. We are adding a random. Here also we are adding random uh, to add more dynamic kind of behavior. So we are adding uh, random features in this. So with that we get a more randomized kind of a behavior, right? In this. So every time we click the button or when you refresh, you will get a new one. So this one uh, for the gradient one, uh, this is again in flask. And this one for the square, again uh, in the flask, uh, you can get here. So let's uh, try that one as well. So let's say uh, square like this. So every time I refresh, I will get a new square, random square like this. Right. So you can see uh, I see using random function uh, to generate new kind of graphics every time you use. And we can add even more advanced capabilities. But this is just the starting point of uh, these capabilities, uh, what we can do uh, in this package. Then uh, this is another one, uh, React. Uh, so in this one also, we can add uh, some graphics. Uh, and uh, let me show this as well. This one. Right, so similarly, we can even uh, combine all these things and create more dynamic kind of a uh, graphics as well we can combine all these things together and we can uh, create more dynamic kind of graphics as well so this one is again another one like that uh to get this and uh, you can see the html code now uh, once you generate that we are loading those images into that and then finally to connect all the pieces we are using the haruku platform uh so i think some of you also heard about the haruku platform so you can see uh, in the Heroku platform, we are hosted this project like this. Uh, so then uh, you can host this directly from your desktop environment and then you can deploy it. Then uh, it will provide uh, this kind of feature. So you can see the deploy timeline and everything. And you can connect to uh, version controls like GitHub and all this. And you can use the free version uh, also uh, to host a Python project. And then you can see it automatically gives you uh, the all these features right so we are using uh, this for this demo we are using the free version you can see from the free version we can try it out all these things and we can get all the features uh, set up uh, from the free version as well right so we are using Heroku platform so if you are new to Heroku platform let me uh, share that uh, also how to set up uh, python uh, plus uh, because you cannot directly host Python in Heroku, it's just Flask. You need to do that because Flask is the web based one you need to uh, set up into the Heroku. So, let me share some uh, uh, demo, uh, some article how you can uh, set up that in the chat here. So, you can follow this and see how you can host so any Flask project into the Heroku platform. So using that, you can get the public URL like this and you can test out your project and see. You can also give that uh, website to your customers and you can get their feedback uh, completely free of charge because uh, if you use uh, AWS or Azure, you need to start paying for credits just from the day one. But here, uh, let's say you are doing this as experiment, prototype, as a hobby, uh, as a uh, the side project. So you can do this much more easily. Uh, without uh, much cost because we're boasting cost is uh, very much these days uh, and also you need to if you go with standard hosting you need to get a domain and everything but here you don't get a domain you get uh, here the name is pixie random 2 so likewise you'll get a unique uh, subdomain and url and a public url uh, to access all these things and on top of that then we can have things like profile settings like about contacts and then uh, we can connect this to firebase and you uh, can add login pages and sign up pages so user need to log in to access this feature then a uh, free user can maybe access certain features then we can add uh, payment capabilities to access other features things like that 
So that is how we can build everything uh, one by one, piece by piece together. So here you can see the Horuku commands. So these are some standard commands uh, to uh, push your application into the uh, web environment or the cloud environment, right? Uh, so that is how you can uh, set up that. Okay. And uh, similarly, we can also use some 2D graphics using uh, Matplotlib as well. Uh, so Matplotlib also providing some of the graphics, uh, easy to use graphics in that. So let me quickly show uh, some one example on that since uh, our time is also running out. So uh, let me quickly show an example on how we can use, uh, how we can leverage a Matplotlib uh, to get that kind of a graphic. Uh, so this uh, Matplotlib also really useful uh, package where we can use that for a lot of uh, data science related uh, visualization. So here we are using Matplotlib uh, random C to randomly generate. And these are some of the parameters, uh, theta, area, color. And uh, we are using the polar projection and the scatter plot. So this is we are generating as a scatter plot uh, and uh, C map is HSV. So you can see uh, we can get like that and we can uh, have the, the this number is limited. You can have compute area, then you can see it's limited number. Then let's say we, we give a bigger number. You can see it's like this. So we can use uh, the Matplotlib package as well uh, to get this. Uh, so let me share that uh, finally to code share as well. So we can get it uh, from the code share link. Let me share that code. Okay, you can try that code. It's the same code share link. Uh, I just replaced the code. Okay. Right, uh, so uh, uh, similarly, we can also work with 3D graphics. Uh, so next meetup, we can look at that area. So where we can use 3D graphics in Python. So this is a, how we can work on a 3D graphics in Python. So this example running in Python, this is uh, completely 3D graphics. Uh, and this is uh, running in a Python environment, right? So we can use 3D graphics also in the Python environment as well. So that is also a uh, possible. So we look at 2D graphics. So similarly, uh, we can use uh, 3D graphics also in the uh, Python environment. Uh, maybe you can look at that in uh, another meetup like this. So that is uh, uh, using a separate package. We can use a pixie package with this one. Okay. So to summarize what we did uh, today is uh, we look at how we can work with 2D graphics. Uh, we look at uh, the Pixie package, how we can use that in the Google uh, Colab environment. So we look at a couple of uh, examples on using a line square, how we can use the font, uh, different fonts and how we can use that. And then different effects, blur effects, and uh, also uh, how we can then host the project, how we can create the Flask project. So Flask is a different environment. It will take some time. Uh, maybe we can have another meetup session about Flask later. So it's a different environment where we can create a client projects uh, using our Python uh, projects that we create, uh, where we can create a Flask environment. Uh, you can add different UI UX elements and things like that into the Flask project. And here you can see we have a dynamic feature where every time you refresh or you click into this page, you'll get a new uh, random output. From that and uh, we can also use Horuku Light platform it's much easier to use and uh, is to configure uh, very simple steps you can see the command earlier very simple step to customize and use it uh, into the uh, hosting environment and free to uh, free to use also up to certain level and also finally we look at uh, Matplotlib uh, that is also another package that we can use for data visualization there are a lot of different charts and techniques available uh, in terms of graphics. Uh, there are some 3D capabilities also available in the Matplotlib package as well, right? Uh, then uh, in the next meetups, we are planning uh, like this uh, more uh, new topics areas. You can also suggest in the meetup group as well. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask now uh, in the chat. 
Uh, also, you can write to us uh, regarding any questions that you may have. And we are planning to bring uh, more uh, meetups like this um, every month that we are uh, working on. Uh, and also, we are uh, collaborating with other companies, startup companies, uh, other partners also bring our sessions from their perspective as well. Uh, this year, we had a couple of sessions like that, and we are again planning uh, a couple of uh, sessions like that in the coming months as well. So you can keep engaged to our meetup groups. Uh, and uh, regarding the video, we'll be sharing uh, the recording of the video in the meetup group uh, in the event page. Uh, so if you not receive the video, uh, it will take one to two days. So if you not receive the video, just you can write to us. We'll share the link. Uh, it will host in our YouTube channel. So it have all the meetup sessions as well, all other meetup sessions that we host uh, in this group. Uh, you can take a look at those as well. Uh, any questions, uh, you can have one minute to discuss uh, before wrapping up. Yes, uh, we have a few uh, YouTube channels. So uh, this one, uh, we actually uh, have a separate channel. So we have a blue chip uh, YouTube channel as well, but uh, these videos we keep in a separate channel. Uh, so let me share that uh, link here. You can find our previous uh, things, uh, previous uh, sessions as well. So this is a link, uh, separate link that we keep these sessions. Uh, you can see uh, we are having uh, two meetup groups in this uh, uh, videos on both uh, emerging technologies in this one. Okay. So uh, seems like no more questions. So we'll uh, wrap up the today's session. Uh, thank you all for joining uh, to the meetup and uh, waiting till the end uh, to the session and question you ask. Um, and I hope you join the next uh, meetup sessions as well. If you have any questions, you can write to us and we'll uh, share the video of the meetup uh, also uh, after the, uh, probably tomorrow, we can share it. Thank you.